So uh, let me welcome you again to my presentation about Hello World in Qt Quick VCB. Um, first, I will tell you something about me. Then I will give an introduction to why we started uh, the Qt Quick VCB. Then um, I will tell you some. Uh, will give an introduction to Qt Quick. Then and then the introduction to Qt Quick VCB, which will include the actual uh, tutorial about how to you how to create the hello world then about the mesh kit SDK which I'm also working on but which is not uh, fully finished but you can uh, have a quick look at it uh, and then the future of Qt Quick VCB so um, my name is Alexander Rössler um, I'm active now in the open source community for about uh, six or seven years, um, mainly as um, developing smaller or yeah smaller applications, uh, but also uh, um, visiting uh, community events uh, such as such as Linux Weeks or or other community events. Um, yeah, my then. The, Three years ago, I started uh, studying electronic engineering, uh, which I finished um, this month. And I'm also an active app developer for some pl uh, from platforms like Android, uh, previously Symbian, uh, Meagre, or Sailfish OS. And my most famous application is probably Q Remote Control, which has about 150k downloads on on the Google Play Store. Um, yeah, and since about one and a half years, I'm active in the 3D printing community, mainly the pre 3D printing community of Vienna, which has monthly meetings. And this is also the place where I first uh, learned to know uh, Linux CNC. Um, Michael uh, sent last year in October or something, uh, a mail to the mailing list who is uh, willing to to modify his printer uh, using a BeagleBone and Linux CNC. I had no idea about Linux CNC at this time, but however, I said yes, and that's how I, come, how I came to the Linux CNC and then the Machine Kit community. Um, directly from the 3D printing community, I was recru recruited from uh, the Cool Tool, uh, which is a small company uh, working on CNC machines and other tools for education purposes. And yeah, I'm now working on Machine Kit and a 3D printer for this company. So um, let me introduce you uh, to a cute quick VCB. Uh, why, st why we started this project uh, was due to the limited resources uh, available on the embedded devices, um, it was hard to get uh, UIs like Axis running on this on a small on, on, the, on these devices. Um, this was mainly because the user interfaces are not designed for small screens, so most of the time they are too big to be displayed on a small screen, and also they need uh, OpenGL for the G-code preview. If this is not available, it uses software rendering, which is not very performant on, on a, such a, sm a small uh, CPU. Um, why the OpenGL drivers are not available is mainly to uh, unsupported drivers on the devices, for example, the SK, SGX um, driver from, from Texas Instruments. I tried to compile it uh, last year. Um, it took me about three weeks or so and without any uh, ne any useful results. So, I, so we came to the uh, idea to use devices other than um, the onboard uh, available HDMI uh, displays or um, yes, and move the user interface from the embedded device to other um, computers such as desktop computer, computers, smartphone, or tablets. 
this has also the advantage that due to the main um, to the big distribution of of this device these new devices uh, in the end user market the costs are are uh, yeah the devices are mostly cheaper than um, embedded displays and also these devices are special uh, are especially designed for uh, running uh, running high performance uh, user interfaces so this has not only one advantage but many advantages okay um, so why come the um, why did we choose Qt? Uh, we chose Qt because it's a cross-platform user interface uh, development framework but however it is more than a user interface development framework for example it provides ways to uh, cr to do multitasking without any uh, yeah multitasking uh, features it provides uh, uh, provides uh, components to create web browser to, uh, browsers it provides components to access sensors on on mobile devices so it is much more than a just a cross platform user interface framework then it is available under under different uh, licenses um, like the GPL license, the LGPL license, and a commercial license. The current company behind Qt is Digier. Uh, for those who do not know the history behind Qt, uh, Qt was um, was owned by by a f quite a few uh, companies in the in the past. It started off with Trolldash. Um, at some point, Nokia bought. Uh, the cute uh, pro yeah the bot control dash for creating their user interfaces for the Symbian devices and the discontinued Migo devices and at some point they lost interested interest in in cute and sold it to Digia which which was already behind the commercial base of cute and however if if DGR um, does decide to not develop an open source software anymore or lo loses interest in interest in Qt, um, the Qt project is backed off by KDE. So it is easy possible to fork the project, and it's also um, it, it, and it will possibly be done if it uh, in in such a case because. Not only the KDE project depends on it, but, but also many other open source projects. Uh, also, a focus of Qt, of the Qt project, is to target emerging markets, like for example, automotive devices or mobile devices like smartphones or tablets, especially in, especially to upcoming uh, new mobile operating systems like Tizen. Or maybe a Ubuntu phone, or also Sailfish OS. Um, it is harder to create uh, an application for just one platform, but you have to create it for many platforms. So Qt is the solution for that problem, and yeah, they they target especially this market for cross-platform mobile development. Um, as you may know, Qt provides Widget-based applications, uh, which was the way to develop user interfaces for the last 20 years, uh, and also Qt quick-based applications. So, what is the what are the advantages of widgets? What are the advantages of Qt quick? Um, yeah, widgets are normally XML um, provide normally created by creating an XML file. These XML files are no, are created by user interface designers, and the problem with that is it is normally not easily possible to create uh, XML files by hand. So you have to use a user interface designer. Uh, in Qt Quick, Qt Quick is a scripting language, so it is designed to be written directly in, uh, directly without using a tool. So it is possible to use the Qt Quick Designer to create user interfaces, but however, it is also possible to use any 
um, text editor to edit the files. Uh, then normally when starting a widget-based UI, you have the problem, um, especially small projects have this problem, um, you end up uh, mixing um, application code and user interface code. And when, you, when this project grows and the file uh, grows bigger, um, no, you normally f cannot find any more where you have done, um, so for example, where you have set a value in the user interface where you change something. Uh, this becomes a really big problem at some point. Um, Qt Quick forces a clear separation of the user interface code and the application code. Uh, Qt Quick itself can, con can contain application code, but you can also create uh, applications purely based on Qt Quick. But however, if you want to create, um, if you want to develop, I say, heavy code um, with much of algorithms or logic, uh, logic functions, you have you probably want to use C++, and you have to use C++ in this case. And this forces you to clearly separate your application code and your user interface code. Then uh, widgets, uh, in general hard to develop. You you have to um, use the canvas of the underlying language. For example, in Qt, you have to use the Qt canvas and the Qt painter devices to create um, to create a new new controls. And this is normally done in C++. And it is not a straightforward um, approach. So it is hard to, to do this. In Qt, however, uh, in Qt Quick, however, um, any QML files can be reused in other QML files. And so you can create new controls based on other controls. So it is easily to extend um, the already available components. Also, Qt Quick is designed uh, to work on cross uh, is designed for cross form factor development so you can create a, a user interface for a smartphone a tablet or a desktop computer without uh, needing to change uh, the actual ui you can you can design it in a way it is it is scalable on all devices this is a is a huge advantage over widgets and also the main um, the main reason why Nokia started to develop Qt Quick because the widgets are not the widgets are not a good approach for mobile development. You have many screens, many many screen sizes, uh, many screen resolutions, so it is not easily uh, easy to develop widget-based ap applications. Um, Qt Quick is a Q, um, pro the, the language behind Qt Quick is QML, which is a declarative language, and JavaScript is the, in, the imperative part of, of Qt Quick. So, um, you, if you have to do some logic or create some algorithms inside Qt Quick, you do it prob usually do it using JavaScript. Um, if you want to assign um, a property to other property, you do it using QML, using uh, declarative bindings. Uh, I will come to that later. Um, then Qt Quick is rendered using the technology called Scenegraph, uh, which renders all the uh, all the user interfaces in an OpenGL context. Uh, the downside of this is that Qt Quick is only available on devices where OpenGL is available. Uh, due to the scripting language, it is possi easily possible to, to create remote di distributable um, user interfaces using Qt Quick, which is also uh, an, advanta an advantage for remote user interfaces. Um, Qt Quick can be extended both by using QML itself or you can create um, create new 
um, models, modules uh, using C++. Um, these models are in, Qt for, in the case of Qt Quick for VCB, um, the code is split in a few models. Um, the controls, machine kit dot controls module contains things like um, contains new controls not available in the standard uh, Qt Quick, uh, not available within Qt Quick. Uh, for example, buttons uh, and combo boxes and so on are available by Qt Quick itself. But however, uh, a gauge control is not available in Qt Quick, and the controls module contains a few uh, a set of such uh, user interface controls. Then the Hell Remote module contains things like the Hell Remote component uh, or the ap remote application configuration. Uh, so all the real code that communicates with uh, machine talk. Then machine kit dot remote dot controls con uh, contains user interface controls combined with hell pins. So it is the way to quickly design user interfaces. However, you can also use standard controls and extend them by hell pins. Yeah. Then the hell the path view module is not uh, is is currently not available. It will con uh, contain things like G code previews uh, and status preview and so on. The video view uh, module contains webcam webcam dis remote webcam displays with, and is currently implemented. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the Hell Remote component. The Hell Remote component is the counterpart of the remote component on the Hell side. So it interacts with the Hell instance using the Hell, tag, Hell Talk server uh, and zero and queue. On the client side, you can have one or more remote components. So your one user interface can have one remote component or more. Usually, you have only one remote component representing your user interface. But however, if it is necessary for some reason, you can also have more remote components. For example, if you want to create um, an application uh, with um, 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 with a modularized approach, uh, you can split up the functions of the user interface into different remote components. Then. Normally, these uh, applications based on Qt Quick for VCB are designed using the Hell application window, which is a normal user interface window uh, combined with the Hell remote component. So in this case, you have only one remote component communicating uh, with machine talk. This is the standard approach and will fit, uh, I think, 90% of all uh, user interfaces developed based on Qt Quick VCB. So you can, um, the Hello Remote component has a container item. This container item is searched for Hell pins. For example, a Hell button contains a Hell pin named button one. Uh, with the with the data type bit and the direction out. This pin is rep represented in the on the hell side using the name of the hell remote co component dot button one, for example. And all user interface components are designed in this way. So you can have a have hell buttons, we have hell gauge, have hell progress bars or any, any other um, custom user interface control using this approach. Um, yes. So you see the Hell Remote component, in this case called control, a gauge, called gauge, and inside Hell it will be rep represented using uh, with the name control.gauge. Um, you also can 
uh, this works using the services. Services are, for example, our, our command, our comp, or other services. Services uh, are provided uh, within meshing talk. And the hell application window provides a way to easily uh, automatically connect the services with the, mesh, uh, with the meshing talk instance. So now I will start with the tutorial part of, of the presentation um, so you can understand uh, how it actually works. Okay, um, I have enabled um, a tool for uh, pre representing keyboard input on this computer. Uh, if it starts to get annoying, if you, if you think this is not helpful, uh, please let me know. Um, and just quickly check if the sound is still working. Okay. So I have created a small sample um, uh, setup. Inside Qt Creator, and this is also uh, the meshing SD meshing kit SDK part, which is not fully finished yet. But however, I have created a a hell application using this which I will use in this demo. You can see um, this is the layout of the beagle bone representing all the pins and, and ports. I have attached three LEDs, a yellow, a green and a red LED and two buttons. Uh, what cannot be seen here is I have also attached a gyrometer and an acceler accelerometer uh, on the beagle bone, so to represent some analog inputs. Um, let me show you the test setup in real. Stop the screen. Okay. Okay. So here's the test setup, three LEDs, two buttons, the Kyron accelerometer connected to the beagle bone. Um, on the on the hell side, this is my hell configuration file containing all the the configuration necessary. But however, uh, I have not implemented all of the de of the demo yet. I will do this during the tutorial. So the most important part is the remote component. The remote component represents the user interface on the hell side. In this case, the remote component uh, is called control and has one pin, control, dot button. Button is a bit, uh, has the data that bit and the direction out. Um, so I will now start. I, I have created um, a wizard for creating new um, user interfaces created by a new file or project, meshing kit, cute quick VCB project. Okay. So now the title of the okay, first choose the right folder. Okay. I would call it uh, hello world.
So this is the name of the project. Um, here we have the name of the application. I called it uh, the one user interface. Uh, you have, can have within one project more one or more user interfaces. I call this user interfaces applications uh, because they can actually contain <coughs> also application code. So they are not simple user interfaces but uh, applications. And the name for this, the first application will be control. Then the name of the remote component created by the wizard will be control as well. Then we can provide the simple description. So the wizard has created the project layout, uh, the project uh, file structure. Um, in Qt, uh, Qt has a, a file called project file, which con conta contains the basic uh, project configuration. In this case, uh, it contains the main C++ file, which uh, is basically nothing more uh, than a QML uh, a QML runtime uh, provided by a library. So in this case, this, this main C++ is only necessary for local uh, execution of the application. Then a res resource file, which contains all the QML files, and uh, yeah, and also the libraries used by uh, by the application. Here, the, I look at the main C++, you see most of this is the header. Okay, it has two headers for some reason. Um, and actually nothing more than loading the main QML file. The main QML file is only necessary for the local, also only necessary for the local application. It cause, uh, contains an application window the application window is necessary to use Qt Quick controls and a connection window. Connection window is provided within um, the HAL remote.controls module and provides um, an easy way to connect remote uh, user interface instances. So this connection window provides all the basic stuff necessary to connect to a remote uh, meshing kit instance. You can have, this connection window can be used either to, to connect to remote user interfaces or it can also work for local interfaces or called applications. An application is described by an application description. This application description is basically a simple ini file containing the name of the application, a, a, a simple description of the application and the type of the application. So this application file will be also necessary for other user interfaces if they want to uh, use the same approach. Let's get back to the main QML. You see? There is also an option, um, Qt Quick has um, components. A component is represented inside QML uh, by an ID. The ID is in this case no string. It is, um, yeah, th this is an, really an ID uh, and cannot be edited at runtime. Then provided, uh, then it provide uh, it contains some properties, like for example uh, default title, auto select instance applications. Properties can be thought of uh, like variables, but however properties 
um, Q QML provides a way to update uh, and change properties automatically uh, using Q uh, QML bindings. And this is what you see here. Here is the double bind, uh, which means this is a binding. So uh, the default title is is bound to is is set to hello world using a binding. So in this case, this makes this is it's not uh, makes no different than setting the default title um, in inside JavaScript. But however. Um, if you have, for example, this instance fi filter here, the instance filter property is set to using a service discovery filter. If the service discovery filter is changed, the connection window gets updated, and the instance filter is also updated. So this this binding automatically automatically um, updates properties. Or here. Uh, maybe a better example: the title property of the application window is is connected to the connection window title, also meaning the title of the connection window using a binding. So if the title of the connection window changes, the title of the application window also changes. So let's take a look at the actual user interface. Um, by default, a simple Hello World application will be automatically created. Um, the Hello application window, um, the Hello application window, is connected, uh, is combined with a Hello Remote component. The Hello Remote component has the name Control. The Hello button is also connected to help pin. The pin has the name button, meaning the whole application window is a remote component with the name control containing one pin called button. Um, this button, as I said the property checked, check able to, um, yeah, this is to a small bug uh, inside the help button, which I discovered previously, but does nothing to the does nothing uh, does not change anything to the to the to the tutorial. Um, yeah, this is a help button. Help button is a normal button combined with a help pin. So when I execute this example, you will see. Uh, this is the connection window actually executed, providing us a, sim a simple um, simple user interface for connecting the remote user uh, remote instances, meshing git instances. In this case, I have this one BeagleBone uh, running on a network. When I connect it, the user interface is loaded. You have this single um, you have the, uh, this single uh, button, you can press it, and on the HAL side, let's take a look at the pins, we have the control dot button. When I change it, when I set it to true, you see the pin on the HAL side is also updated. So what happens if the Hell Remote component does not match the Hell, compo Hell Remote component on the Hell side? Let's try this out. You, I just create a second pin with with the type. Bit with the direction out, saving the file, 
and executing again. So now we come back again to the oh no, this was the wrong. Okay, we come back to the connection window, connect to the things, uh, to the to the remote instance, and you see we just got an error. Find rejected, bin count mismatch. mismatch. So you see, uh, after one remote component is bound on the hell side, the remote component has has to be, be exactly the same uh, every time an a other user interface or remote component connects. So you have to make sure that this setup uh, represents exactly the same setup defined in the hell file, in the hell configuration. Or else you will get this error. So now we have uh, three LEDs, uh, two buttons, and a free um, and this acceleration uh, accelerometer. So a button is not uh, probably not the best uh, the best user interface control to rep represent um, this application. So let's start uh, using the designer. When I open the designer on the help application window, okay. You see, um, you have a preview of the application window containing just this one button. Um, within Click Quick VCB, a few controls are provided. Usually, the the most used controls uh, within uh, a user interface. But however, also other more advanced controls like Gauss or even Brown gauge, for example. Um, so let me add a gauge control. Okay. You see, when you drag and drop the the user interface control on the user interface, Qt Creator automatically generates some code. Take a look here. You see, the round gauge was created inside the file. Um, what you know, what you also see is that uh, the position of the round gauge is is fixed to a, sp a specific point in the user interface. Um, this is not a good approach when developing uh, user interfaces for different uh, screen sizes. So, in case you want to use this user interface on a different screen size and the and the screen is smaller, you may, uh, your user interface control may be too small. So Qt Creator has here a, a tool where you can change, um, where you can preview different uh, screen sizes. Your whole user interface is resized to the screen sizes uh, specified in this text field. So let me test this. 300 width and 500 height. And you see this control, the button control, always stays in the center of the user interface. But however, the gauge stays at the same position. So for that purpose, um, Qt Quick provides two um, two different approaches to, to fix this problem. One is called anchors. So you can anchor your user interface controls to points in the user interface, like, for example, um, the left side of the user interface, the top of the user interface, the right side, and so on. And so on. The second approach, approach called layouts, um, orders your your user interface components in rows and columns and grids. This is similar to the previous, uh, previously used approach uh, for widget-based applications. So you have to have to decide or maybe combine the two com uh, to do different approaches. For some things, the anchors are better. For other things, the layers are better. So let me give you an example. I now use the layout to fix the position of this control to the left and to the top of the user interface. 
with a margin of 10. You see now, when I change the size of the user interface, uh, maybe I, I attach it to the right side. When I now change the size of the user interface, um, also the control moves. You see the anchors are very useful for creating user interfaces for different uh, screen sizes. So now an example to the layout based approach, I will use the controls layouts import meshing no, no. import layouts so layout you now see a column layout a grid layout a row layout and a split view I use the column with the round gauge inside the column if it is possible. Okay. So sometimes it is, it is some functions do not work currently in the in the design app, but however it would work in the code. So if I create it here, directly here. Okay. Into the column layout. Okay, the gauge is now in the layout. When I change now the layout, right, left, align, align left and right, and to the top. You see, it automatically aligns the control inside a layout. If I add now a second gauge to the layout, frame gauge 2, okay it's a, it's a column layout uh, Okay, you now see that it automatically aligns the two gauges inside the layout. So these are the two approaches for creating uh, scalable user interfaces. Another thing uh, very useful is our, uh, the property bindings. So let me create a no, dial is not useful in this case, uh, let around that. Um, if I want to set the size of this LED, I can use a binding. For example, parent, no, hello, parent dot with multiplied with zero and one. And you now see that the width of the LED is automatically set 0.1 times the, the user interface. Okay. Also very useful to create scalable user interfaces. The LED will always be, will always scale to the whole size of the user interface. Uh, yeah, so let me show you all the available controls. So we have the color picker, which can be used um, to pick colors, for example, for a RGB LED. When you want to control uh, such a LED, you can use these colors to calculate um, the PVM values, then we have the dial. The dial can be used to control um, 
floating point values similar to the slider. Okay. Slider is just an uh, other represent representation of the dial. Then we have a gauge. A gauge is similar to a progress bar, but however, has a, a bit um, a few more features, like for example a color colored progress bar uh, with different color zones. You can see the color zones, and also um, it provides a way to create a gauge that, that expands in both directions. So here we start in the center of the gauge, and the the bar grows in both directions, depending whether the value is greater than 0 0.5 or lower than 0 0.5. Then different LEDs. In this case, just uh, you can, if you change the radius of a rectangle, uh, you can create a, a, a square LED, a, a recta rectangle array, uh, a square LED, a round LED, uh, or something between. If we change the radius, that means, for example, to 10, you have a LED which is something between round and square. Then, okay, remove this control now. Okay. Then we have the round gauge already previewed previously. The value chart, okay, which is a or a chart that can be used to lock values and a joystick-like control. Um, yeah, this can be used to control uh, something in in X or and uh, epsilon axis. Direct. Um, And also the default uh, controls combined with helpings, for example, a radio button, a progress bar, a uh, um, spin box, a label, a container which is enabled or disabled depending on the value, a checkbox. And of course the button. Uh, yes, and also the combo combo box. Okay. So this was a, a quick look at, at all the available controls, and we will use now a few of these controls to create a decent user interface for this uh, small application. Let's get back to the code. First, we have to define the remote component inside the help configuration. So I will define, um, I'll add one, or let's say uh, I'll add green. a LED yellow and a LED red. Then the two buttons. But these button buttons are represented, uh, uh, these buttons are direct with direction in because they're all, they're they act as inputs. So they are not on the user interface side, but on the hardware side. So they act as input to the remote component. Two. 
two, the direction in. Okay. And let's take a look again at what what values we have available. Um, Um, let's take the the rate. Yeah, let's take a uh, let's take the rate of the of the curometer as as floating point value. Put in get a few signals, music G bit. Red button and the rate music. So previously I've set the LEDs uh, using the set pin method on the Beagle Bomb pins turret and set the pins of the control. This is possible before the control uh, before the remote component uh, is bound. Before the co remote component is bound, uh, you can set the default value of remote components using this, the set pin method. Is set to zero. These are low active. Then we activate it uh, with the yellow. Oh no, now this is an input. Okay. So now we have to connect the signals using the net net control dot g let hello Wrong direction. Oh, Controls the green lead. Yellow 
controls the yellow light. That. Driven by the hardware button one. We have the rate again. Okay. Um, maybe we add, we also add some Some uh, local display of the LED value. LED G. Let's say we for view. This also do the not the yellow. So now the hell, hell configuration is finished. I can now start the hell file. So at this point, the hell configuration is deployed remotely to the BeagleBone. OK. Load it. Let's take a look at the pins. See that we have the control, all the controls pin, all, all the control pins of the remote component. Now we can use um, Qt Creator to create a nice and decent UI for the for the application. Okay, so let's remove no, one of the cars. Also remove this gosh. We need a hell gosh. See, we have a meshing kit controls and meshing kit hell remote controls. The hell remote controls are the default. Um, Controls extended by a hell pin. So we use the round gauge. And again, I cannot drag and drop it into the I will now uh, do this um, directly in the Okay, so we add a hell word and three more One, three. to represent the LEDs on the local interface. 
can now open the Zasana again. We have the three LEDs aligned inside the layout. Um, I also add and set fill with. Um, to al align all the controls on the left side. Um, then we'll try to represent the, the buttons using labels. Oh, this is, yes, remote controls, label one, label two. Labels can have text. Um, no, no, no. Um, we use um, radio, 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 radio buttons to represent the the value of the buttons. Okay, the name of the first radio button was button 1. The second radio button, button 2. Okay, and the text of the button We also have to change the name of this component. It's not called gauge, it's called rate. Then of the LEDs, we have LED G. Yeah, LED G U. LED yellow U. And LED red. View. Then we have to change the color of the LED. First, starting by the with the green LED, so green. Then the yellow LED, yellow, and the red LED. Red. Okay. Um, then we create three buttons. One, two, three. The first one is called LED G. We have LED. And let yes. and we okay. Uh, set the value to check able. So, then the rate is usually, let's say, between 0 and 20. Okay, so we have now a very simple user interface for this application. Let's try it out. Okay, hello world. And hopefully we'll get no pin mismatch. We see the buttons. If I press the hardware button. Okay, actually they are the buttons are inverted. Then we have the LEDs.
which are also inverted. Uh, so in, in my case, when I, when the LEDs are um, a lighting on the on the screen are visible visible on the screen, uh, I see that they are disabled in the applications. Um, let me show you. Now we have here three lights. See, I can change them using the user interface. And the buttons. Also represented on the user interface. So when I change, OK, we are, here we have the accelerometer. It's probably more than 20. But you see the, the gauge represents the actual value. So this works. So now we have uh, finished a very simple user interface for this application. Now we want to, let's say we want to deploy this, uh, this user interface. Um, this can be easily done using a simple uh, um, simple commands uh, to the to the meshing kit application QBS uh, file. This command. The, the user interface. Um, the user interfaces are named using the project name, in this case, hello world, dot the application name, this, co this case control. So in case we create the second application, we can just create uh, a second folder with a new name. Okay, save this. UIs. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. Let's deploy the application again. Let's take some time. Okay. Oh. This was an error on my side. So let's deploy this again. Okay, the application is now loaded. I switch back again to the camera. Okay, camera. Now we see the tablet. Hopefully, we can see it. Oh, it's mirrored. Okay, so you have to imagine that this is not mirrored. Okay, now I see this application was not deployed 
uh, on the tablet, it's running, uh, the instance is running on the remote computer, uh, on the bigger bone. And, but however, we can see here, control and the description, Hello World's demo control. When we press here, you see, uh -huh, okay, this application is deployed. And now you see the, 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 the problem uh, previously, you see this, the problem I previously described. Uh, if you have a screen which is bigger or has a bigger resolution um, than the standard screen, you see that the user interface gets distorted when using fixed sizes. Um, so in this case, you have to change the, you have to create a layout, uh, layout and set the width and the height of the controls depending on the screen size to get a nice result on different uh, uh, different screens. So now let us switch back to the screen. Okay, so now this was finished. Now uh, I will show you how to add a second uh, a second application to a user interface project. Switch back to Hello World. Then we right click, add new. Now we see here different things like health configuration, big bone user universal. I.O. configuration, or the Qt Quick VCB application, which we need now. Okay, uh, here again, uh, I have not managed to uh, detect automatically the project name, so you have to specify the project name again. In this case, Hello World, an application name. I call it test, and yeah, description, this is a test. Uh, the component is called test. Path is correct, but we want to change to add it to the QML file, to the uh, QML resource file. Okay, finish. And now see we have a second application configuration with a new description and a new file. This again contains the default hello world button. So when we execute the application again, you see we get the same instance selection. Press. And oh okay, I forgot something. Uh, the application needs to know that we, we have a second uh, user interface. So you have to specify the second application inside um, the main QML file. So you just add another application description with the right path. Hello about test. Let's start. Okay. Available instances again. And now you can select one of the two applications. Let's select the test application. Ah, okay, we see again the hello world button. Let's get back. The control application with the yeah the control user interface we created previously. So you can have more uh, one or more local interfaces, but you can also use this to access remote interfaces. You can have local interfaces, for example, displaying a webcam or something, and you can have a remote interface doing uh, a controlling your application. So. It, it is flexible in any way. So during development, uh, it's most of the time annoying to select uh, the instance manually. So you can just change this property to true. And now the instance is automatically selected. So when you develop an application, this is probably a useful feature. Um, the behavior of this can be controlled using the instance filter. When you uh, put in here a name, like for example, meshing kit on whatever, it filters all the available meshing kit 
applications using this string. So you have a, have a BeagleBone with a specific name. You can can filter for this name. So in case you're developing, but however, if you have 10 BeagleBones on a network with different names, you can just filter for one BeagleBone with a specific name and it will automatically select the right instance. Okay. Um, now, uh, well, um, also maybe I should um, um, describe this. Um, if you need help, Qt Create that has a nice help uh, help uh, system built in. If you press F1, um, you get the instantly the help to the component you have, have selected. Or if you press F1 on a property, OK, normally you should get, OK, let's, let's stay at the component level. Uh, for example, the connection window. If you press a second time, F1, it will get full, full screen. You see the connection window documentation with all the available properties. A description to the connection window using uh, which describes uh, what I have said previously, but however, with also other examples. And a description to all properties. Um, you can also use the contents to search for Qt Quick VCB. Um, if I can find it. No, 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 no. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Qt Quick with the control panel, which an, with an overview of all available components. The controls, the HAL remote components, the application config, the HAL pin, the HAL remote component, and so on, and the HAL remote component. So if you need some help, uh, use the documentation. Also for the standard uh, Qt components, like for example, if you need help to the application window, this works just the same help to the application window and mo in most of the cases this is um, the, the help provided within the documentation of the within Qt is, uh, is, is enough to, to solve most problems. So um, yeah what is if you want to create a custom? Component. Let's say you have um, some control. Let's say a button, a help button. So it has not the feature as the help button, and you want to extend it using a pin. In this case, specify the. Then set the name of this pin. But in case set the name of this pin. Ah, uh, direction uh, is out. Sorry. Type bit. And now you can set the property bindings of QML to use the value of the button, of the, yeah, the button, the parent. Uh, in this case, the value of the button is called checked. Um, the value of the pin to parent dot checked. This can be done for any kind of control. So in case you need a second pin, which is button dot inverted, 
open to. You can set, okay, value is not parent check. I changed the remote component to test2, so we can test this. And again, we use the anxious dot center in parent. Do align the button. So when I start this test, you have this single button, uh, which is very small because it's had no, it has no text. Set some text. Again, start, test, hello world button. So now, okay, sorry, I make it checkable. So the value state. Again, run, start, hello world. I'm going to now take a look at um, our available components and pins. We see test2.button and test2.button inverted. Let's press the button. And we see okay for some reason change the value. Um, for some reason it does not affect the value. Maybe I have a button. So again. Yes. Now you see uh, the value of the yeah, the value of the button component changes when I change the value here, and you see the inverted pin is always the inverted value of the button. So you can create uh, any new component uh, using this approach. So now we take a a very quick look at what is if there is a component which is not available at all. So you want to create, for example, uh, a custom button, or uh, yeah, let's take the let's say we want to create a custom button. In this case, we also create a new component. Use Qt, Qt quick. Okay. Um, hello world. Now we want created in test. We give it the name test component, or test control in our case. Test control. Okay, add it to the QML, QRC file. Okay, so we have a test control, which is a rectangle, Let's say 200, 200, uh, with the color green. We have a green rectangle, and we add a mouse area. And give it a T. Area. But the color should be red when the mass area is hovered. So in this case, we, uh, we say hover enabled. And the color, using a property binding, we can set the mouse. Contains mouse. When the mouse area contains the mouse, it should be green. In any other case, it should be red. Then uh, let's say this component uh, 
should have a help him with the value with value true when the when it is hovered and with value false if no mouse is over the rectangle. Let's add a help in. Okay, we have to add import or meshing kit. Import meshing kit. Now we can create the help pin. Okay, help pin with that. And the value. Of course, we have to set again the type. Type is bit. Direction. The name. For the name, we can create a new property string name default. We we'll call it default and default. And the name of the pin. Okay, again. Punct parent uh, top. A double point, of course. Um, name. So the help pin will have the name of the property of the rectangle. The help pin will have the value set by the mouse area, which fills the whole rectangle, have the type bit and the direction out. So if we want to use this component, can just open the designer. Or we cannot open the designer for some reason. Oh, God. Okay. However, let's deactivate the button. Try again. Sometimes the designer has some problems. This is the, the reason why I prefer the text editor. But you can just... Give it a name. Let's say um, test control. Let's change the name again. Now we have this mouse area. When we move the mouse over it, We'll change the color and also it is false in this case. Oh. Okay, I cannot show it because, yeah, but you see um, the value uh, of this custom component is now connected to the value of the, of the remote component. Okay, um, I think I'm now through the whole cute quick for CP tutorial. Um, yes, let's take a look. Screen. Sorry. Skip this. Uh, the meshing kit SDK. Uh, what you have already seen um, with the Hell application uh, is this is a way to create a, a help based uh, meshing kit based uh, project directly into Qt Creator, meaning the user interface and the Hell configuration and new components, new, new Python co parts of the new Python user land components, new comp-based real-time components, uh, and all the things that come with a typical meshing kit application. So it should be easy to use. It should be cross-platform. And uh, it should have a 
work remotely. So m normally the meshing kit ro works on a remote device, meaning a BeagleBone or Raspberry Pi. So it should work over SSH. And Qt Creator provides all the necessary tools for this purpose. So what we have already seen is at the first parts of this uh, SDK, which I try to develop. And yeah, uh, as you have already seen, it contains the BBIO config, graphical BeagleBone IO uh, file editor for pin configurations. It contains um, animal text editor, of course. It's, a, it's an integrated development environment, so it should have a text editor. But however, I have created also a, a syntax file for how a syntax file for comp or other meshing kit specific languages might, might come. Uh, Python, Python syntax highlighting is supported. So um, basically currently provides already the tools necessary to develop applications. However, the remote execution is currently in work in progress. So it is currently possible to start the applications remotely, but however, it is not possible to stop it. So this is the, the meshing kit SDK, the idea behind the, behind the meshing kit SDK. So I think I've now come uh, to the end of my presentation. Um, it was, yeah, I've, you know, I think it's it's enough for the for today. Uh, maybe I will make some other tutorials on, on some more specific uh, quick VCP stuff or the meshing kit SDK itself. Um, yeah, so what can you await in the future? Uh, what uh, one thing that is currently absolutely missing is implementation of uh, some kind of G-code preview. This is due to currently only the how remote component is supported, which is good for controlling simple projects, but however for um, Linux CNC applications for controlling uh, 3D printers, CNC machines, and so on, um, this is not, uh, yeah, this is not finished yet. So in the future, HAL groups, HAL, HAL name, named ring buffers, and other meshing talk uh, specific services have to be implemented. Yeah, thank you for your attention. If you have some questions, uh, yeah, I will take now a look at the mailing list and yeah. So I um, currently find no questions here. Hmm. Also, I cannot see anything on the chat, so, yeah. Thank you for your attention. If you have some questions, uh, ask them on the mailing list. Uh, yeah, I will answer them later. <laughs>